In the early 1950s, music was due for a major change. Country and R&B were huge, but a new sound was about to hit the scene that no one was prepared for. The sound came out of a small studio in Memphis, Tennessee, run by a man named Sam Phillips. Over the next few years, many artists would come in and out of the studio, bringing their new sound with them. The studio was the hottest thing around, and soon everyone knew the name, Sun Records. In this series, we are going to take a look at 10 of the most famous recordings made at Sun Studios and the stories behind them. I'm your host, Jake Fife, and it's time to drop the needle on this story. The first song we are going to talk about is considered the very first rock and roll record and was recorded at Sun Studios in 1951, but released by Chess Records in 1951. Rocket 88 by Jackie Brinston and the Delta Cats has been called one of the most influential songs of the 1950s and is said to have given birth to rock and roll. This song was based on the 1947 song Cadillac Boogie by Jimmy Liggins, and the song also came from Rocket 88 Boogie Parts 1 and 2 by Pete Johnson, which came out in 1949. The writing was credited to Jackie Brinston, who was Ike Turner's saxophonist, and the Delta Cats were really Turner's backup band, the Kings of Rhythm. It is said that Ike Turner actually wrote the song, although some accounts say the whole band came up with the lyrics as a sort of praise for the Oldsmobile Rocket 88 car, which had recently been introduced. The song features one of the first uses of distortion, which occurred when an amplifier was damaged while driving on Highway 61. The band tried to fix the equipment, and newspapers were stuffed, actually wadded newspapers, which created the distortion. Upon hearing this, Sam Phillips really liked the sound, and they went with it for the recording. In a later interview with Rolling Stone, Phillips said, The bass amplifier fell off the car, and when we got in the studio, the woofer had burst, the cone had burst, so I stuck the newspaper and some sack paper in it, and that's where we got the sound. The more unconventional it sounded, the more interested I would become in it. The record was supposed to be credited to Ike Turner and the Kings of Rhythm, but was instead credited to Jackie Brunson and his Delta Cats, which angered Turner, who blamed Phillips for the error since he was the one who licensed the song to Chess Records. Adding fuel to the fire, Turner and the band were only paid $20 each for the record, and Jackie Brinston sold the rights to the record to Sam Phillips for $910. The single reached the top of the best-selling R&B charts on June 9, 1951, and stayed there for three weeks. The song was also notable because it was one of the first songs to be embraced by both the white and black crowds because of the appeal it had to teenagers from all walks of life, and future rock and roll records would play on these themes even up to today. The song also proved to Phillips how important Dewey Phillips in radio would play in the future. Dewey was the host of a local radio station and would play just about anything Sam brought to him. Ike Turner later said the song was the first black record to be played on a white radio station and the white kids went crazy. They rushed to the record shops to buy the music. Over the years, other artists started blending R&B with other genres, mainly country, to create the rock and roll genre. Many of these artists, such as Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Carl Perkins, would come in to Sun Records and help give us the rock and roll we know today. I'm Jake Fife, and I hope you enjoy this very first episode of Sun Records. Stay tuned next week, where we will be looking at another song from the Sun catalog that changed music forever. <laughs> <laughs>